kidding. <laughs> Psalms 12, verse number 6 and 7. The Bible says, The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. Amen. Great portion of Scripture and one that I've committed to memory and one that every Christian, I believe, should be familiar with because it is important to know what we believe about the Bible. And God's words are pure words. Amen. We preach from the Bible because God's words are pure words. We don't get up and preach from a book. We don't preach from some man's philosophy on the human life. We preach the Word of God because they're pure words. They're like silver tried in a furnace of earth. And so God's Word's very important in the life of a Christian. So I'd like to just preach a message to you tonight on what should a Christian do with the Bible. What should a Christian do with the Bible? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you. Thank you again, God. I pray one more time, God, and ask for your power, ask for your presence, ask for your blessing, and ask for your help, God, on the, on the service tonight. May you fill the room. Holy Spirit of God, may you move among each and every one of us, Lord, and be convicted of a truth of maybe, Lord, what we are doing, that we would be encouraged to keep doing it. And, Lord, if we're not doing it, then may we be convicted to do more, God. Would you please move in each and every one of us tonight. Holy Spirit, if somebody does not know that if they died that they'd go to heaven, they don't know, Holy Spirit, that they would be with you, they would, they would be with you, be with Jesus in eternity, that, Holy Spirit, you would convict their heart and of their need of a Savior. We love you. Ask that you'd bless the message tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. The Bible, the Word of God, is the greatest treasure that we have been given besides our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus, when He was, given, when he was born on this earth, the greatest treasure that we could ever have, and then Jesus gave us His words. Now, Jesus is the Word of God. According to his words, John chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And so this is the greatest treasure that we have on earth today. The Bible says, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Can I ask, what do you treasure today? What do you treasure? You say, well, how do I know what I treasure? How do I know what means the most? What you treasure is what means the most to you, what you, would, what you seek after, what you invest in. Well, here's a couple of questions. What do you spend the most time of your day doing? Now, this is aside from work. A lot of us work eight hours a day. That takes most of our time. This is, this is something that you do voluntarily, that you give your time to because you enjoy it. That's what a treasure is. Not necessarily a necessity, but something you enjoy. What do we spend the most of our time doing? What do we in America invest in? What is the last thing that we would get rid of? If we had to get rid of everything, what would be the last thing that we would get rid of? What could you not live without? Uh, if, you could get, if, they gave, if somebody gave you the money to buy whatever you wanted, what would you get? Boy, that's a tough question. <laughs> get me a new car. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> if you had nothing in this life and can only ask for one thing, what would it be? God says that where our treasure is, there will our heart be also. We want to be careful that what we allow as Christians to treasure does not take place of the Word of God. Because what we will treasure is what we will give our life to, what we will devote our time to. Here's a better question. What takes place of your Bible reading every day? Whatever it is that takes the place of you reading your Bible is what you treasure. Whether it be a car, whether it be a job, whether it be uh, a family, whether it be family outings, whatever it is, if it causes you to not be in your Bible, that that's, that's what we treasure. The Bible is a treasure that we should invest in. Proverbs 8.10 says, Receive my instruction and not silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold. God says the Bible's worth more than silver. The instruction of God's Word is even worth more than gold. And God compares that because that's what men live for. Many men live for gold. During the, 
during the, 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 uh, the California gold rush, many people sold everything they had in, in, a, in, in just a mere hope of finding gold. And how many people would drive 45 minutes, an hour, just to be in church? Not many. Because what do we treasure? We should treasure the Bible. In a Christian's life, in our families, the Bible ought to be a treasure. The Bible ought to be looked upon as something we enjoy, but something that we hold dear, not just as another book on the shelf. Amen. We should respect the Bible. I believe that the Bible is the greatest book ever written. I believe that the Bible should hold priority over anything in this world. The Bible is God's Word, and it should be handled as such. Amen. I believe that we ought to teach our children to respect God's Word. When I was growing up, my dad would never let me put anything on top of the Bible. Now, if, I'm, and now if you do, I'm not saying that you're backslidden. But he just used that to try to teach me a respect for God's Word. He would never let me put my books on top of my Bible. He said, son, that's the Bible. Nothing, you, nothing goes on top. That's what he used to help teach me a respect for God's Word. For instance, you don't take a letter from the Queen of England and make a paper airplane. Amen. That's a, it, it's something of value because of who it's from. Amen. And the Bible is the same way. The Bible should be respected for what it is because of who it's from. It's from God. Amen. I believe that our children will do more, will, ha, will have more of a respect for God if we teach them to have more of a respect for God's Word. Amen. I believe that when it is read, that they will understand more the importance of God's Word, the more respect that we demand of it. Amen. I believe in America, the reason that, it, the reason that they have made it an okay thing to take words out of, God's, out of the Bible is because there's no more respect for God's Word. They don't respect the Word of God, and so they feel the need to change whatever they want. I believe we should take whatever measure that we can, whatever you decide to do as a family, do what you can do to teach your children to respect the Word of God, to treasure it, to make it a high priority, that when they see it, that it's not something that they can just go and rip the pages out or go and, and, and wipe their hands on, but that it's a treasured book. Because it's God's Word. Amen? Learn, and then last, we should learn to love God's Word. Psalms 119, 165 talks about how that we ought to... It says, Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Learn to love God's Word. Enjoy it. Teach your children to love the Bible. Teach them by showing them an example of a love for God's Word. Amen. Because the more that they will love God's Word, the more that they will delve themselves into the Word of God, the Bible says that they will have great peace and nothing shall offend them. I promise you, any Christian that is easily offended is a Christian that does not love the Word of God. That's what the Bible says. Because there's great peace to those that love thy law and nothing shall offend them. Now, not saying we won't be offended from time to time, but we won't be so offended that it causes us to lose our testimony or causes us to fall short of the Word of, the word of God. Amen. Now, what should we as Christians do with the Bible? It's a treasure. It ought to be looked at as a treasure. Amen. The Bible in times past was not always available to everyone. In modern days we have printing that's available, but when William Tyndale uh, and, and those men that had to uh, finally were able to print the Bible uh, and, they were, and they were persecuted for it, but they wanted to get it in the hands of God's people because there was a hunger to know the Word of God because the Word of God was not as easily available. But now in America, it's so available that we've lost the treasure of the Word of God. Don't let your children lose its treasure. Don't let your children lose a respect to know that just because there is an abundance of it does, doesn't mean that we lose the respect and, and the treasure of the Word of God. It's kind of like with money. When somebody works and earns for their living and they make a million dollars, 
Amen. That million dollars does not spoil them, but they still have a respect for how they got it. But you give it to somebody that does not earn it, and they'll spend all of it at one shot. They won't save it. They won't budget it because they don't know what it takes to get to that point. So with us in the Word of God. If we don't teach our children how we have the Word of God, the price that was paid, they'll never have a love for it like we do. They'll never have a respect for it. Teach them how that there was a price that was paid, the trail of blood to be given for the Word of God. How men and women died so that we can have it. Amen. What a treasure that we have. God says here, as we read in our text, that they're pure words and then God has preserved them. God from generation since, since the beginning of time has preserved His Word so that every generation could have a copy. What a treasured book that we have. So what should we do with it? It ought to be treasured by us personally and by our families. What should we do with it? Number one, a Christian should read the Bible. A Christian should read the Bible. What should we do with God's Word? We should read it. Revelations 1.3 says, Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. 1 Timothy 4.13 says, till I, till I come, give attendance to reading. Ephesians 3.4, Whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Uh, in Luke chapter 6, verse 3, Jesus asks a question. The Pharisees and all of them are asking Jesus questions. There's problems. There's questions that come up. And they're trying to confound Jesus. But Jesus asks a very important question that I believe echoes to us today. He says, have ye not read? In Luke 6, 3, Jesus asked them, the answer to your questions is in the Bible. When did you read it? I believe a lot of questions can be answered by Christians. I believe a lot of your problems can be solved. But you just haven't read. Because Jesus said, have ye not read? If, ye, if we would read the Bible, we would find the answers that we need. I believe we ought to read all the Bible. We ought to strive every year, every, or at least once in our lifetime, to read every word that God's given. You realize God paid a price to give you this blessed old black book. We ought to spend at least, maybe read it through in a year. Maybe take a two-year plan, however you can. But I believe that God, if He found an importance and a price to give you such pure words, we ought to read every one of them. We ought to do our part to strive to read every word that God's given us. Amen. Every word is important, the Bible said. Man doth not live by bread alone, but by every word. I believe if every word's important, then every Christian ought to read every word. You ought to read it personally. You ought to have a time every day that you spend reading God's Word. Every morning or every evening and have a set portion that you spend to read the Bible for yourself. You will do yourself more good by just reading God's Word every day. I promise you, you'll watch yourself grow leaps and bounds just by simply reading the Bible. The Bible is compared by Jesus to a bread. Amen. It's like your spiritual meal. Every day you have to eat. God's, we, we have to eat three times a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Some of us eat four times a day. Some of you, like me, eat five times a day. We have to eat. Well, as a Christian, spiritually... Your spiritual body has to eat, otherwise it withers and dies. And the Word of God is that spiritual nourishment. Amen. We ought to abide in Christ. To abide in Christ, to get to know Christ, we have to know His Word. Amen. That's what will keep us going. I believe we ought to read all the Bible. We ought to read it personally, but then we ought to read it with our families. You ought to have time every day that you can spend reading God's Word with your family. I have to say I've not been uh, uh, as, as, as persistent with this one as I should because there are times where we have late nights. There are times where I have busy days. 
And I have not kept up with this. When, uh, when the Lord put that thought in my mind as I was studying, I thought, oh. <laughs> See, you thought the messages were just for you. No, they hit me hard too, brother. Let me tell you. I need to spend more time reading God's Word with our family. Why? Because our children need to hear the Word of God. 1 Timothy talks about how that the script, Paul says the Scriptures were able to make thee wise unto salvation. I believe if we read to our children the Word of God, they will get saved at an earlier age. Listen to me. I believe if you read your Bible to your children every day, they'll come to know Jesus at an earlier age. Because faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. If you want your children to be saved, then they have to have faith. Well, how much of the Bible are you giving them? I've got to give Adeline as much Bible. When she was born, I did. I, I, when she was born, I quoted John 3.16. Because, you know what? The Bible just says that faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. It doesn't say what age. So I quoted the Bible because I pray to God that she'll get saved at an early age. Let me tell you a story. Have you ever heard of Alexander Scorby? Anybody ever heard the name? Alexander Scorby is a man that when they wanted, they, he read the Bible through on, a, on tape. And then you could put the tape in and hear the Bible read to you. Alexander Scorby was not a saved man, but he took the job and was paid to do it. And he read the Bible through for those that maybe could not read or maybe those in a hospital bed, they could put the tape in and they could hear the Bible read. Alexander Scorby, halfway through, reading the Bible, knelt down and got saved because he said, because of just, he, he testified just because of reading God's Word, he fell under conviction and got saved. Just because of reading the Bible. He didn't have a soul winner there. He didn't have somebody to, to, to explain the Romans road. He just read the Bible. But reading all of this book, he got saved. Because the Bible is powerful. And I believe if you want your children to be saved, then you ought to spend time reading the Bible together. Explain the Bible together. I have many friends that I know. I got saved at a youth camp when I trust Christ as my Savior, but I have many friends that got saved with their moms and dads at a, at a family altar time when they were going through the Bible and explained God's Word and they wanted to get saved, and they got saved then. So I believe that we ought to read it personally. I believe we ought to read it with our families. Mom, get your children and read them the Bible. My grandma was a Jew, born and raised in the home of a rabbi, lost as a goose in a hailstorm. But she came to know Jesus as their Savior. From then on, she began reading with my dad and my, and my aunts the Bible every night before they went to bed. My grandpa was a drunk. My grandpa used to come home and beat my grandma after being at the military base, drinking it up with friends late at night. But my grandma would still get my dad and my aunts around the, around the bed and say, we're going to read the Bible. And she would pray that her children would be saved and that her son would grow up to be a preacher. Today, my grandpa is saved and born again. Praise be to God. And he's in church, and my dad's a preacher. I believe it started with one lady that saw the importance of the Bible and read it to her children and prayed for them. You'll do so much good by just reading God's Word. Number two, a Christian should listen to the Bible. Revelations 1.3 said, Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy. Hearing God's Word, I believe you can do that through preaching. You ought to spend time listening to God's Word through preaching. Amen. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. Download some sermons. You say, where do I get them? Let me know. I can get you some. But listen to God's Word through the preaching of the Word of God. Amen. Every Christian, I believe, ought to. At least Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. Listening through preaching. But I believe you can also listen... Amen. Through uh, someone reading. Like I said, there's, there's tapes by a man, Alexander Scorby. You can look them up. You can order tapes of the Bible. Play it in your home. Play it while you're driving the car. Play it uh, when you just have nothing else to do. Amen. Quit. Don't turn the TV on. Listen to the Bible. Do something. Amen. Not, not, not that I'm against TV, but make the Bible a priority. Amen. Uh, and I believe you can also listen to the Word of God through fam family altar. Listen to it at a family altar where you take time and everybody reads the Bible. 
Everybody reads it and everybody listens. That will get the Bible in your family, amen, in your home, in your ears, amen. Cause the Bible to be listened to, not just read, amen. Because like we said, faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. The more Bible you can listen to, the more Bible you read, the more faith will be produced. Number three, a Christian should memorize the Bible. Psalms 119 verse 11. We're in the book of Psalms. Go over Psalms 119 verse 11. A very uh, familiar portion of Scripture. But one, if maybe you're not, if, you, if you've never seen this verse before, amen, commit it to memory. Psalms 119 verse 11. See what I did there. Uh, the Bible says, Thy word have I hid in mine heart, that I might not sin against thee. Amen. Thy word have I hid in mine heart. Sometimes some people say, well, this is the only verse that deals with memorizing God's word. Well, doesn't God only have to say it one time? Amen. How many times do you tell your children, I, just have to, I should only have to tell you once? Amen. Well, God shouldn't have to repeat it. God tells us, hide His word in your heart. But I believe memorizing God's word will do a couple things. According to this verse, it will keep us from temptation. You hide God's word in your heart, you memorize it, you spend time committing verses to memory, and you'll find you'll do a lot less sin. Do you, if you have a problem maybe with sin, maybe you have something that you're dealing with, you're trying to overcome. Like I talked this morning, children of God have the, have the power to overcome, but that power comes from the Spirit of God. And like Jesus, when he fought the devil, what did he say? Jesus said, it is written. Jesus quoted the Bible to the devil to overcome the devil. Well, who are, are we greater than Jesus? No. So I believe it is an example to us that to commit that Bible to memory and when temptation comes your way, quote the Bible. Amen? Quote Scripture. Maybe you, even, maybe you don't have necessarily a sin, but something that's a weight. Something that maybe you have a character flaw. Maybe you're not as... Uh, maybe you need to, to help. When I was a teenager... I remember uh, I, I was uh, kind of uh, like, I couldn't just get up as early as I wanted to. You know, I would like sleep in, you know, I loved my sleep. And uh, so I put verses to memory about go to the ant, thou sluggard, consider her ways and be wise. I wrote them down on three by five cards. You know, I read these verses, you know, and stuff. And, uh, and I remember I was out sewing one time and this guy, I knocked on his door and uh, he came to the door and I said, invite him to church. He goes, no, I like my sleep. Slam. <laughs> And so I was like, well, I'll leave the track in the door. I, left, I put the track in the door and I looked at it. It was that verse, go to the ant, thou sluggard, consider her ways to be wise. I was like, oh, then I switched that back out. I was like, boy, I'd get in trouble for that one. Amen. But I would commit those verses to memory because I wanted to get up earlier and read my Bible. I wanted to do more for the Word of God. And they told me, memorize God's Word. Well, I found verses about it, so I memorized it. Amen. And then I started working at UPS, getting up at 3.30 in the morning, and God answered my prayer. I was like, thanks, Lord. <laughs> now, but memorize the Bible. It will help you in times of temptation. But also memorize the Bible because there are answers or there are promises that God has in His Word. Maybe you today are struggling. Maybe you have a burden. Maybe you have a need. Well, memorize a portion of Scripture that deals with it. The promise that God says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And in your prayer time, quote that and claim God's promises. Amen? Memorize the Bible. But also to memorize the Bible, not to just keep from temptation, not just to, uh, for promises, but also to help in teaching. Look there, Deuteronomy chapter 6. Great portion of Scripture when I was uh, studying the Bible. Uh, came across this. And, and, I, and it's a great portion of Scripture. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 6 through 9, the Bible says, And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. God says you ought to have the Bible on your mind all day long. Now this is meditating... But he says, it will be in thine heart. You cannot meditate what you don't have memorized. If you don't have the Bible memorized, then you can't think about it all day long. Because it will run in your brain. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And you memorize on those words. Well, how can you meditate on God's word if God's word is not in your mind? Amen? 
But God says also so that you can teach your children. I believe also when you teach others, not just your children, but maybe you're out soul winning and you're giving somebody the gospel. You memorize those verses because maybe something comes up and you quote a verse. You ever maybe been around somebody and you didn't carry your New Testament with you and they ask you something you're like, oh, I wish I had my Bible with me. I could give them an answer. Well, memorize it. Amen? To help in those things. I've done that many a times and I go back and I like write that down and try to memorize it, but I have... Terrible. I have like short-term memory where I can memorize it and then it's gone the next day, you know. Uh, but memorize it. It will help in teaching, but it helps also to be on your mind all day long. I believe this is also important in our children. Coming up uh, soon, I'd like, to, I'd like to begin some kind of a Sunday school program to help the children have the Bible taught for their level, but also to encourage them to memorize the Bible. Because I believe it's important for children to memorize God's Word. Amen. And I want to, in our church, produce a mindset where the children can come and memorize the Word of God and challenge each other to memorize more of God's Word. They get enough in their minds in the world. I believe we ought to do our part as a church to keep in their mind the Word of God. Amen. So number three, a Christian should memorize the Bible. Number four... As we mentioned, a Christian should meditate. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. Many of you are familiar with it. If you're not, good verse, write it down. But it's a memory. <laughs> Joshua 1, 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. That's the memorizing part. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night. God says meditate on it. So not only should a Christian memorize the word of God, commit it to memory, but put it in your mind day and night. Think about it. One way that's nice for me is I have three by five cards. I write it down, and then I take it out, have certain times in the day, I remind myself, look at that verse and then think about it. You know, meditate. It's easy for a pastor to meditate on the Bible because this is what I live for. This is what I do. So for pastors, this almost can become part of a schedule. It's harder as a layman to meditate because you have work on your mind, you have family here, you have things. I mean, it is harder. I know, I mean, I've done where I've worked, a part, I've worked a job, went to college, and done church. It's hard to, on your mind, be thinking of God's Word. But, remember this, when you deal with sin in the world, I always committed to memory dealing with those sins. Like, for instance, at the hospital, I would deal a lot of problems with immodesty. I dealt a lot with ladies that would come in however they wanted. And so my mind and my, and, and my thoughts would be constantly bombarded and I would constantly have to be looking down and praying, asking God to forgive me. And then I would pray and God say, and I would, every morning I'd go to work and I'd say, Lord, I want a Philippians 4.8 mind. And quote Philippians 4.8, and I would ask God to keep my heart and mind stayed on Thee. And quote those verses. And then throughout the day as I would see things, I'd say, Dear Lord, forgive me for where I failed you. And then I quote verses in my mind to keep my mind pure. And then I would meditate on those things. Meditate on those verses. Meditate on the truths I've heard and thought about. And that keeps your heart and mind stayed on Christ Jesus. Meditate, meditation is a special part of a Christian's life. Sometimes we, uh, we, we allow the world to, when we think of meditation, we think you have to you know, sit, cross your legs, you know, and, um... <laughs> It's not meditating. Meditate is just to think upon. You can meditate while you walk. Now, uh, my, I have a problem. I cannot chew gum and meditate at the same time, my wife told me. Uh, I have a hard time doing that. And then paying attention to her at the same time while I'm meditating and chewing gum, it's all too much. So I have to do one thing at a time. Meditate, chew gum, listen. Meditate, chew gum, listen. So I, I've developed a schedule here. But you can meditate at any time. Amen. Just meditate. Think upon the truths of God's Word. Amen. Number five, a Christian should study his Bible. 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You ought to study the Bible, even if you take 5, 10, 15 minutes of just studying the Bible. Because when, when, what happens is you'll read God's word and you'll say, Wow, that's a really good verse. I never saw that verse before. Then what you do later is you take 10 or 15 minutes 
and meditate on it and then study it. Look in the Bible where God says other things about that portion of Scripture. And studying helps you learn the Word of God and learn more of what God says. Amen? I believe most Christians could solve their problems just by simple studying. Amen? You'll solve a portion of them. You can imagine, we have problems. Make a big circle. Big circle, okay? If you imagine, everybody, I should have brought a whiteboard. Make a big circle, okay? And you've got a bunch of little dots in it or write your problems in it. You read God's Word and you'll narrow it down. You memorize God's Word, you'll narrow it down. You meditate on God's Word and you'll narrow down your problems. You study God's Word and I promise you there'll be very few things that you'll not, that you'll not understand. There'll be very few things that you have problems about. Very few times you'll have to ask the pastor why. Amen? Because if you study God's Word, it will root you and establish you. Now, not that asking why is a bad thing. I've asked why lots of times when studying I could not find an answer. And I thought maybe the pastor can help me. In his studying, maybe he's found an answer. But I promise you, you'll develop a better Christian walk through the study of God's Word. Every Christian has time. But more than that, I believe every Christian must have time to study his Bible. Amen? Why? Because we need to give an answer to every man. Every man, the Bible says, needs an answer for when we're asked a question. If you don't study God's Word, you won't be able to find those answers. Maybe somebody asks you a question and you don't know the answer. Tell them, I'll get back with you. Let me study that. Amen? We ought to be able to give an answer whenever somebody asks us about our faith to be able to tell them... This is where it's at. Amen. Also because according to 2 Timothy 2.15, it says, so we won't be ashamed. It says, a study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. We want to be approved unto God, not ashamed. When God looks at you and you've not studied His Word, the Bible says God does not approve that you be ashamed. God can't put His stamp of approval on you. In other words, God cannot send you forth in the ministry. God may not be able to use you as much as what you would desire. You won't be as approved by God, and you'll be ashamed. I've met many people that want to serve God, but end up being ashamed because when they go to try to do something, God shuts the door. And I know, and I know, and I know it's because they were not a studier of God's Word. They didn't know what they believed. They didn't know more about God's Word. They weren't grounded in their faith. God says we need to study to show ourselves approved unto God. And then also so that we rightly divide the Word of truth. The reason there are false religions is because somebody didn't study the Bible. The reason there is confusion about God's Word is because there's a lack of study. Study, the Bible says, is a weariness of the flesh. Most people don't want to study because it's tough. You study the Bible for an hour, you get tired. It, it's a weariness of the flesh. You don't naturally want to do it. And I believe that there's a lot of false religions because somebody did not take time to rightly divide the word of truth. The Bible is truth, amen. And there's a way that God wants it divided. There's a right way. Some will take it out of context, and then some will rightly divide the word in itself. You'll get the right answer by rightly dividing, but you have to study the word of God. And let me preface as well. If you're not saved, you'll never rightly divide the word of truth. The Bible says that the, whole, that the, nat, that the natural man receiveth not the things that are of the Spirit of God. You have to be born again. If you're not saved, reading the Bible will never make sense. If you try to read your Bible to grow, it will never make sense unless you're born again. Okay? And you'll never be able to rightly divide the word of truth. That's why I've met people that are twofold child of hell, the Bible says. Because they're not saved and then they've let themselves be conned into a lie. And then they try to divide the word of truth and they're backwards. You ever met those people? You try to talk to them. You say, what are you thinking? But it's because a Pharisee or a Sadducee or whatever got a hold of them and taught them false doctrine. Amen. And made them, even a two, and made them a twofold child of hell, the Bible says. We have to rightly divide the word of truth to know what God's word says. To give an answer to every man. That means an answer to your family. The Bible talks about how that 
ladies are to ask if they have a question, ask of their husbands. Well, men, if your wife asked you a question, could you give them an answer from God's Word? God says we as men ought to be able to give an answer and the ladies are supposed to ask the husbands or the men, what does God's Word say? As a pastor, I have to give you an answer because you'll ask me, what does this say? I've got to rightly divide the word truth to give an answer to every man, every lady. Amen? That's what God wants. We ought to study. Now, what is the result? The result of all of this Getting, in, getting involved in the Word of God results in three things, and then we'll be done. Changing, number one, changing. Romans 12, 2 says, Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Philippians 2, 5 says, Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Psalm 119, 165, Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. All of these talk about a changing of attitude, a changing of spirit that comes not only just from being saved, but the Word of God. The Word of God is the seed, amen, that when it is received and you're born again, and then the more you get in God's Word, the more God's Word will change you. The more God's Word will, 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 do, will cause you to think differently, will cause different desires, will cause a different outlook upon life. Number two, the Word of God will cause cleansing. Psalms 119.9, we read it. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word. Ephesians 5.26 is a great verse. It says that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. God wants to sanctify or set apart and cleanse us with the washing of water by the word. The more involved in God's Word that you are, the more you read, the more you memorize, the more you meditate, it will set you apart, it will help sanctify you and cleanse you as a Christian. Because you say, okay, you're like, well, Pastor, I, I, uh, the book of Numbers. Let me tell you, it's tough. When you start getting into all the names and chronicles and all of those things, let me tell you, it's tough. But it's kind of being compared to a strainer, and you've heard the illustration before, you run water through a strainer. You may not be keeping all of it, but it's cleaning it. You may not be retaining everything, but you clean it while it's going through. It's kind of like a sponge. You can only hold so much, but that water is constantly cleaning. And God's Word is like water. You may not understand everything, and a lot of it you may miss, and a lot of truths you may say, what, what is that talking about? But you just keep reading because you don't realize on the inside... It's cleansing. On the inside, it's producing faith. Amen? And then it sanctifies you. God wants to set us apart. God wants us to be different from this old world. The more you read your Bible, the more, of, the more uh, different you'll become from the world. God wants to clean us up. The Bible says He wants to cleanse us. He doesn't want us to have the old flesh and the old life and the old world a part of us. God wants to clean that out. Amen. God doesn't want His church, the Bible says, to be uh, 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 His church to be spotted. Amen. God wants to clean, cleanse us. Then number three, it causes cultivating. Isaiah fifty five eleven. The other verses I knew by memory. This one I did not. <laughs> Isaiah fifty five eleven. Let's turn there. Let me get in my Bible here. Isaiah chapter fifty five verse eleven. The Bible says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper the thing whereto I sent it. God's word will cultivate you. God's word will help you to grow. Because God's word never comes back void. You may not understand everything, but it's causing you also to grow. Because God will always, God's word will always accomplish that which God sets it out to do. Amen. God's Word will cause a growth in a Christian's life. You will grow. Your family will grow. Uh, Hebrews 4.12 is also another verse. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Another verse I did not memorize. Bad pastor. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 4, verse number 12. Here we go. The Bible says, For the word of God is quick and powerful. Oh, I do. Uh, yes, I do. And sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing center of soul and spirit and the joints of the marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Put that one back down on my memory list. Man, I thought I had that one. No. 
But, it's, but the Word of God is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. It's quick and powerful. And the Bible says that it, it, it goes on the inside and it causes you to think. It causes you to discern your thoughts and your intents. And it will produce growth. Amen. Put it to you this way. Little Bible, little Christian. Much Bible, much Christian. In other words, the more of the Bible that you have, the more of a Christian you will be. The less of the Bible that you have, the less of a Christian you will be. If you want to know why somebody backslides, I promise you it's because of a lack of a diet of the Word of God. Here's another statement for you. What you do with God's Word determines what God does with you. What you do with God's Word will determine what God will do with you. You want God to use you? Get in God's Word. You want God to help you to see more people saved? Get in God's Word. You want God to cause to bring power in your life and in your family, see loved ones saved? Get in God's Word. Because the more of God's Word you have, I promise you, the more that God can do with you. Because it will sanctify and cleanse you. Sanctify means it sets apart. God will set you apart for more service for Him, for more that He wants you to do, the more Bible that you have. How much time do you spend in God's Word? Now, there is never enough time that we can spend in God's Word. Even as a pastor, we can always spend more time. There's not a limit where if you spend this much time, you've reached the epitome of Christianity. You can always spend more time. But the, the, the principle is to spend and budget the time that you can and then work on more and more and more. There's a man that I know. Um, his name is Ray Young. He spends four hours every morning. And I know Brother Houston gets up early. Amen. Earlier than even I do. And I'm working on it. Go to the ant thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise. <laughs> Because these men, the more and the longer they've been in the work of God, the more they rely on God's Word and understand how much they have to have the Word of God involved in their life. The longer I've even pastored, as in two weeks, I've had more of God's Word than I've ever had before because there's more of a responsibility. You may not need as much maybe of God's Word as I do, as a pastor, I must spend more and more and more, but we all need a healthy diet of the Word of God. Now, I know some laymen that spend more time in their Bible than even a pastor does. It's not saying that a pastor has to spend this much time, a layman spends this much time, a child this much time, and a team. God doesn't do that. God says you spend as much time as you want, as you can, as much as you're willing, God will take. But God says just to be in His Word. Do it. Get in there as much as you can do, as much as you can be involved, amen. As much time as you can devote, as much time as you're willing to give God, God will take. The question is not, when do I have time? The question is, do I want to make time? Because there's always time for God's Word, always. We just have to make a conscious decision to be in the Word of God. Make a conscious decision. Turn off the TV at night. Get your family around and get in God's Word. My wife and I, we don't have a TV at this time. And the, more that, and the longer we've not have it, and I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying that we've just made, we made a decision. We just we didn't want it. And you know, we enjoy. Because we already don't have enough time sometimes. We don't make enough time with, it, with what we do have. Why add more? Amen? So the principle is don't add more. Now, it, now I'm not against it because I love the weed. <laughs> so when I go to my parents' house, buddy, let me tell you. Beautiful, let me tell you. No, but what I'm saying is the principle is don't add more to your schedule if you can't fit it in already now. Amen. It's kind of like your budget. Don't add another expenditure if you can't meet the budget already. You know what I'm saying? Makes sense. You know, I had to learn this. Wes has taught me all about budgeting and stuff. You know, he's really gone through what I, I'm telling you. I've learned more from this guy 
And, but, you know, so don't add more to your schedule. But do you spend time in God's Word? Everyone needs to. Our children have to. We as Christians must have to, to grow. God wants us to grow. Are you growing today? Are you growing tonight? Have you grown in the past year? Well, let me encourage you. Get in the Word of God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we sure do love you. Thank you, Lord.